Hey guys, welcome to my aunt's kitchen. I'm doing a little bit of house sitting. She will be back in a day or two. And uh, meanwhile, I went down to my old house, which I'm still trying to clean out and uh, get on the market and sell. Don't really need two houses, do I? And came across this old thing. Got this at a ham fest. Oh gosh, about 10 years ago or something. This is probably IBM's weirdest laptop. It is an IBM PC radio with a funky green logo. It's the only thing I've ever seen with a green IBM logo. Anyway, this is a really a small laptop. You can see my hand is, is well, it's only, you know, maybe this case is what, 8x10? Um, this was marketed for remote data collection use. It is an MS-DOS machine, believe it or not. Um, it's got a little LCD screen. Let's open it up. And I know this is a little stiff, so pardon me while I contort. Right. There we go. Tiny little keyboard. There's the screen. Probably 640 by 400. Maybe 640 by 200? I don't know. Nah, probably 640 by 400 with that, those aspect ratios. Uh, this here... Not a trackpad, nope. It's a little thermal printer, or should be a little thermal printer. Mine is missing. And this uh, this is where the roll of paper is. We have some weird lights here. We got a lightning bolt, a couple of arrows, and uh, not really a heartbeat. It's like a triangle wave thing. These machines were meant to be more or less wireless. Either wireless or connected via phone line. Now, this one is a machine type 9075. I think this is a Model 1 because it is the modem version. And there indeed is a, uh, a modem on the side. Let's put this on the side here. There we have a little modem port. There was also a cellular based version of this and then also a radio version of this for communicating with an old, uh, well at the time it wasn't old, but now it's a le legacy data uh, radio network. This is a weird thing. I'm not so certain what this is. I think it's for a telephone headset because I think you could actually use this thing as a phone. PCMCIA slot. Mine is missing the battery. Actually, two batteries. That looks like it's probably real-time clock battery or something like that. And that's the actual real battery. Actually made by IBM. Let's put it down here. Flatten this out. I'll show you this is where the uh, where the printer lives. Mine is missing. See if we get this thing in here. It's a little tricky. There we go. Now these things are interesting. These are for a strap. They're hard points for a strap. You could actually sling this around your neck. So as you're walking around the warehouse or the, uh, the oil field or wherever, you could sling this around your neck and look down and type. Let's open this thing up. Oh, before we do, yes, there is one more connector I forgot about here. Slick, slippery. This guy in the back, that's an expansion port. Now, you can actually get this guy here. Basically gives you serial and parallel out. And there's a cutout there that Looks like it ought to have more on there. I don't know. Because that's an awful lot of pins for just serial and parallel. Anyway, I've loosened up most of the screws here, so bear with me. Oh, the screwdriver's terrible. Hold on. Yeah, 
I took out there. There's about a million screws that holds this case together. I figured, you know what? You don't want to watch someone do a million screws. Oh, why am I doing that? Let's see if we can open this guy up here. There we go. Okay, let's take a look at it. Top, yep, the LCD screen. Interface for the printer. Let's take a look at the actual guts. Well, hard to read, but that's actually an ADC-186. So this is one of the very few PCs that actually used a 186. Which means it's probably not completely compatible, because there were some issues, I think, between uh, uh, with running um, PC applications on 186 machines. That's, that's kind of why 186 machines were not popular in the personal computer world. They were vastly popular in the embedded world. Uh, but that's one of the reasons why you, it seems like they went from the, the 8088 uh, right to the 286. So 186 was more or less skipped, and 188 by that matter. Well, we can see the PCMCIA there. There's the modem. And there's a bunch of uh, IBM custom chips, a little bit of glue. Looks like a serial, serial chip there. 33C90, that I think is a SCSI chip. I don't know what that's for. Um, maybe there's SCSI on there? I don't know. Or does that handle PC? No, nah, it doesn't handle PCMCIA. I don't know. See, we have a little speaker there. Very compact. It sort of looks like there could have been, there is space for a second PCA, PCM CIA uh, slot, but not utilized. Here's that weird connector, and judging from the size of the toroid, I think that's a combination, yeah, look at that, that's power. I think this is combination power and headset. Because one of the options on, on this thing, or I don't know if it ever came into fruition, was you could get a headset, handset for this thing and use it as a phone. Now, I don't know how popular these machines were. These Try going on the net and looking for these things, and they almost don't exist. Um, there were probably better solutions out at the time um, by other vendors for strange wireless data uh, capabilities. But hey, IBM tried. And yeah, I don't know anyone that used these. This one does show signs of use. It does have some sticker residue and so forth that, uh, well, the stickers are long gone. I'd like to get this thing running. I don't have a battery. I will have to do a little bit of reverse engineering to find out what what the battery should be. Um, you know, it's it's probably NICAD. This is early enough that it probably is not going to be lithium ion or anything nickel metal hydride or anything like that. Because looking at date codes, I see it looks like mid nineteen ninety. Although it's interesting. These chips here, Flash or ROM, I don't know, 1992 um, copyrights. So this probably was upgraded at some point in its life. Looking around, looking around, interesting, interesting device. I have no idea which IBM division did this? Well, there's this, another interesting thing. I wonder what that is for. Another connector. No idea. It does kind of look like you could put something right about here. Over here, this area is kind of taken up when you close this thing up. Um, this, this well here is mostly taken up by the bump for the printer. So I have, you know, 
that's probably pretty full, but looks like you have a little bit of real estate here. And I do see this weird connector. I don't know what that's for. I'm assuming that, yes, since being that this looks to have, that looks kind of modem-y like. Actually, I probably need, yeah, ringer. Yeah, so this, this is modem. Um, the two other models, the cellular model and the... Uh, the uh, uh, radio uh, data net model. I assume their mod modules fit right in here. I have no docs, so I can't confirm. Hey, if any of you guys have docs, let me know. There's a tiny, tiny, tiny amount on the net. Basically, the announcement letter from IBM is still there up on the IBM website. Uh, if you actually go to the IBM website and do search, you can find some interesting stuff that they kind of never bothered to take down. Um, old manuals and things like that. Uh, the announcement letter is is around for this thing, and it kind of goes over the uh, the ins and outs of this a little bit. But no no hard technical uh, technical information really. You know, schematic drawings, nothing like that. Nope. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of reverse engineering here. And yeah, it'd be fun to get this thing up and see if I could actually get this to to boot. Uh, MS-DOS. Um, I think MS-DOS would, would have lived on the PCMCIA cards unless unless they're uh, they're in these uh, ROM chips. I'm assuming there's, those are either ROMs or Flash. Actually, I should run those numbers. 41G, 5141, and 5142. Find out what those are. All right, well, hey, weird, weird, weird PC. One of IBM's weirdest things. Well, in the PC world, anyway. They made some uh, some equally weird things. I'll, I've got a few other strange IBM PC-oid things that I'll get around to. But this, this popped to the surface, and I said, hey, I'll make a video on it. So, hey, if you, any of you guys know any more, anything more about this device, sure like to hear from you. Hey, leave a like, maybe share this video, and perhaps even subscribe. And then, if you're really in for some fun, Go back and watch the old videos. Okay, talk to you guys later. Bye now.